first college basketball player to opt out of the season. And uh, I know, Patrick, you made the uh, decision, you made the announcement on Twitter uh, yesterday. What, what was the main reason that you decided to opt out? I know you have a young daughter. I know you dealt with COVID. How much did those things play into your decision to, to forego this season? I, I would say um, testing positive for COVID kind of validated everything. Um, being in the two week quarantine and just being away from the game and just being away from my family and my daughter is kind of just like, you realize you have to realize the priorities that you have. And being a young dad, I take on that responsibility with pride and just being able to, to even contemplate that decision was difficult, but it was kind of something that I felt like I had to do. And um, my my parents have made ultimate uh, sacrifice for us growing up as kids. And I feel like it's my it's my job to be able to do the same for my daughter and and to have her in the best situation possible, especially um, at, at the young age that she is. And, and like I said, the, the game of basketball, I've been involved with it for 17 years. So to be able to finally remove myself and kind of step away from the playing surface is kind of just surreal, but it's definitely a decision that I've prayed about and definitely have considered with my family and close friends. So a lot of people would say, all right, you already had COVID, right? You know, you already had it. I mean, that's kind of what a lot of people are trying to say right now. You're not going to get it again, most likely. Right. Um, why did you kind of go against that theory? Just because, um, I guess the, they say a 90 day, 100 day policy that you don't get it. If you look at three months from now, you'll be in the December, January mark, and that will kind of be the heart of the season. Plus, um, the chances of somebody else on the team or just another opponent being able to, to contract the virus, which I wouldn't wish that on anybody, but it's just the reality of the beast that we're facing right now. And I feel like some, I feel like I can speak for the guys on my team. None of them have, um, the responsibility that I have in a daughter and, and raising a child. So I feel like from that, it kind of just puts me in a category of my own. And, and I relayed that to him. I, I relayed the message. I told him it was bigger than basketball and that those guys would be fine. They're in good hands with the coaching staff. And, and I, I've seen the work that they've put in. So they just got to, they have to go out there and get it. Obviously I'm going to miss it, but like I said, it's, it's more, uh, it's bigger than basketball for sure. What, what was your teammates' reaction? Did it come out of nowhere? Were they surprised when you told them? Come out of nowhere, but I, I, I told each and um, every individual on the team, called the returners um, first and foremost, and then kind of just followed up with the new guys. And, and they understood. Some of them even um, said that they would pro possibly do the same thing if they were in my shoes, and they definitely understood with moving forward and kind of just the time that we're in now, especially, but um, – at the end of the day, it's just a game. The game has given me so much, which I'm greatly appreciated for. But sometimes you just have to be able to step away and, and, and adjust and face life as it hits head on. You know, what people probably don't understand about you is you're a local kid, right? right. From Johnson City, started out at App State, transferred to ETSU. Last year, you guys have an incredible season, 30 and 4, 16 and 2. You're going to the NCAA tournament. You're not able to actually play in the tournament. Right. Your whole team leaves, right? I mean, five of the eight guys graduate, two more transfer. Uh, you're going to be an all-league preseason, all-league guy. This is your team this year. Right. Yes, How sir. much more difficult did that uh, – did it make it for you to opt out? It was very difficult because this was actually my best statistical preseason that I've had while I've been in college. I was shooting 54% from the field, 46% from three, and I had a 15-1 to assist-to-turnover ratio. So it was kind of – it's kind of it's insane because it's the best that I've felt and I felt confident, obviously, just being able to um, be a mentor to the new guys and kind of just be the voice in the locker room. And I know I know it's big. I know it's difficult. I told Coach Shea I knew that he would be disappointed in me because rightfully so. The timing is is not the most ideal. But then again, at the end of the day, you have to do what's best for you and your family first and foremost. But I was I was looking forward to the season, especially last year, kind of. Um, going through the obstacles of having hip surgery the prior year before and then having a daughter in between the middle of the season and just being able to get to that point where the ending at Western Carolina and then going to the SOCON championship game and then everything gets pulled out from under you. And it's kind of, it was an emotional roller coaster for me. I felt like I wear my, my emotions on my sleeve and I'm able to, 
to do that in a positive way. And it kind of just uh, put me in a place where you kind of, you put all this time in there and for something to be taken away from you is kind of, I wouldn't say bitter, but I mean, it's just how, it's just how life goes. And, and I, like I said, I've prayed about it and kind of consulted with my family and it's kind of just the best decision that we came up with. So it sounds like Patrick, like it didn't matter whether they're going to play a full season this year or not, you know, yeah. or if, if it started November 10th, 24th, if you felt like you're going to play a full non-conference schedule or, or an abbreviated one, that really didn't matter into this decision at all. This was more about your daughter um, and not being away from your family potentially for 14 more days right. um, if something happened. Right. I mean, we've been on campus for, I would say, probably July. We got on campus and those guys haven't seen their families. And I know how family oriented that, that I am and just being able to have a new addition is kind of yeah, I can take that sacrifice of being away, but it's kind of just like in the time that we're in now, do you really want to? Because one of my closest friends, his grandmother had passed away and she was in the hospital and individual or the family members couldn't come and say their final goodbyes. And I know how difficult that was for him. And obviously I would never wish that on anybody. But like I said, it's just the reality of the times that we're facing now. But <clears throat> I think the limited season or potential limited season, um, kind of had an effect as well just because emotionally mentally physically you put so much and you invest so much into the game in itself and to be a senior or to be a fifth year senior and to have gone through the process and you see you know what it looks like you know how what success looks for, looks like in adversity and just being able to overcome a lot of things it's kind of just like if you're not really and I don't want to use guarantee, but if you're not really guaranteed what you feel like that you deserve, you don't want to sell yourself short. No, you're right. I mean, listen, who knows how many games you end up playing this year? I mean, a lot of guys, that's been a big topic of conversation among college basketball right now is should all the players get this year back, right. no matter what happens? Because let's face it, most guys, most teams aren't going to play 27 games. They're going to end up playing probably closer to 20 games if we're fortunate this season, I think we can all agree on that. So you wonder how many guys are going to red shirt because of that, just, you know, saying to themselves kind of like you are for, for a little bit different reasons, but why am I going to burn a year that I may not play more than 15, 18, 20 games? That's why I think a lot of people, a lot of coaches are saying to me, the NCAA should already make a decision or should make it soon for everybody to get the year back, which is going to be hard because of scholarship wise, right? The right. incoming freshmen, if you decide to come back, how do smaller schools handle that financially? Right. I feel like that is a big burden for schools, especially, like you said, I know the spring sports gave their athletes a chance to, to do that. But I feel like it's difficult to, to allow a season and then to be able to kind of allow them another season. Because like you said, financially, it's already a financial burden as it is in itself. But to kind of put the high school seniors on hold and and take care of the college guys is kind of first and foremost, but it's kind of just like moving forward. How do you really process and how do you go through that? But um, I would say <clears throat> each, each individual really has to do what's best for, for themselves first and foremost, because you only get a chance at, at life once. And I know guys, um, guys that I had talked to that have played basketball who I played with last year, they were just like, don't live with that regret. And I feel like in a sense, I don't, Maybe looking back on it, I may regret it, but the decision that I made now, I don't feel like that I will regret it moving forward just because of the unknown. Um, and you see football games getting canceled left and right and kind of just teams kind of affecting other teams. And it's kind of just a, a domino effect. And obviously the NCAA is doing what, what's best for the situation at hand, but it's kind of just like in the, in the midst of everything that's going on, it's just a game. And you don't want to put anybody else at risk if you don't have to. So is this it for, for Patrick Good as an ETSU player, as a buck, or do you plan on trying to uh, get a waiver or, or whatnot to play a six-year? Uh, I would say I would say as of now, done, but definitely keeping all options open. I don't want to close any doors that, that I have walked through just because um, that's just not the type of person that I am. I'm a big relationship guy, and I want to keep – keep those bonds and those relationships um, through thick and thin, because obviously with Coach Forbes and his staff leaving, obviously I felt like that was a um, a big decision 
college uh bas- as a college basketball player just being able to be there and then seeing those guys leave but we still have the 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 same day-to-day relationship that you would expect I still send them pictures of my daughter and I still call to check up on them and make sure the um the team is good and stuff like that and I told them don't schedule ETSU on the calendar because <laughs> it's not going to be pretty but no I, um it's definitely been a blessing so far I feel like my college career just being able to at App State, being able to go to UT and, and score 21 in my first or second college career game on the road and playing at Duke and NC State and going to beating LSU and and um, going to Kansas is just an experience, just experiencing the, the college ride. And and to know that I started out with you know, a single hand of scholarships. I mean, I probably had more D2 scholarships than I did Division One, but it just made me even more hungry to get to feel like to go out and get what I deserved. And every day I just had a chip on my shoulder. I'm not overly athletic. I'm not overly quick, but I feel like I do you have to shoot opportunity. it, man. You can I, shoot yeah, it. I, yes, sir. And I've definitely put the time in and, and for the kids out there, if you want to go achieve a dream, go out there and achieve a dream that, and don't let anybody tell you otherwise. And because I mean, obviously I've had people pulling me in different directions, but I kind of just kept my tunnel vision, kept, kept my faith in God and, and, and trusted my family's opinion and, and, and I uh, leaned on some of my teammates and and stuff like that. So it's definitely been a and a process. It's definitely been a grateful process that I will never. I feel like my college career was definitely a success, and I want to see um, ETSU continue that their success and Coach Forbes and their staff at Wake Forest to do the same, and Bo and Davian and those guys. And I mean, it's last year's team was really special and to not be able to play in the NCAA tournament was very difficult, but we will, er- we will forever share that bond. And we'll basically just call ourselves a national championships until somebody tells us otherwise. <laughs> there you go. Hey, nobody, nobody can fight it. Cause we don't know who the, the national title would have been, but I, I'll tell you what, I wouldn't have bet against you guys in, in the first or second round. Oh yeah. Um, we, I, I feel like swagger wise coming up, going on a 12 game winning streak to end the season is kind of just like, Everybody was just clicking and selfless. It's kind of it's it's the ideal college team that you want to surround yourself with because we knew everybody's strengths and weaknesses, and to be able to have eight twenty point scores with that, that led us in a game is kind of rare nowadays. I mean, you have your one or two superstars out there, and everybody else is kind of just a role player. But just to know um, that you could get one through eight at any given night is kind of hard to scout for I know that'd be stressful for myself you know really mature decision I think Patrick obviously a personal decision um since you made it have you had other players from from college basketball reach out do you think this is going to be a trend um within college basketball like it is to some extent I don't know how many college football players have done it but certainly you've got more guys have done it for maybe the reasons of protecting their draft stock than anything else. Do you see this becoming something where you're the first of many to opt out in college hoops? Oh, I could definitely see that happening just because um, the college experience is rare. It's, it's, It's short a period of time and you want to be able to, you want to be able to take everything in that you can all at once. You don't want to be, you don't want to set yourself short. You've worked this hard to get to this point just to be able to play 20 games. Yeah. And then me and my dad, we talked, he was like, well, what's the difference between 20 and 27 games? And I was like, well, if you think about it, that's all the non-conference games minus the non D ones. And I feel like the, that's a critical seven games, but um, I feel like it could be a trend moving forward. Um, I definitely want to see guys um, protect themselves first and foremost and kind of make that decision for themselves. And obviously they're going to hear everything of do this and do that and why you should do this and that. And I feel like being a 22 year old young man, I feel like to be able to make this decision that I made is kind of just going to help me maturity wise moving forward. And I feel like making tough decisions on your own is the only way that you can kind of process life at itself and then kind of just prepare for it in that, in that stance. So, I mean, if, if anybody ever needs anything at the college level, please uh, reach out and kind of, if you want to hear more insight of my decision, don't be, uh, feel free to reach out um, on Twitter, Instagram, or uh, I'll definitely hit you back just because it is a difficult decision. You know I mean? It is no, no it, doubt. And, and, and the good thing is you seem at peace with it. And, and- 
and I felt, and I, that's how I knew it was the right decision, just because my emotions have stayed level throughout the whole process, and it's kind of you don't want to make a you don't want to make a lifetime decision on an emotion, on a split emotion, because those emotions could go away at any given time. But I feel like at the end of the day, I've I've given everything that I could into basketball, especially fighting through an injury is probably the one of the, I felt like that was one of the most difficult things because I got injured in August um, of last year and having to sit out and redshirt from the transfer rule is kind of just like, okay, do you redshirt two years back to back, which is difficult in itself, or do you fight through and play through the season? And I felt like me fighting and playing through the season and- Especially with that team. Oh right. yeah, especially with the team that we had, it's kind of just like it, it's a sacrifice, and I felt like to be able to do that, those guys just kind of give me an upper edge because they know that what I went through just to go out there and compete with them. Uh, what's your daughter's name, and how old is she? Uh, her name is Braylon, and she's she just turned seven months old, eight days or on the fifteenth of September. So you're so. you're changing plenty of diapers now. Plenty. Too many. I'm I'm tired of changing diapers. It's it's either a poopy diaper or it's a messy diaper. And I'm just like I remember. Hey, I'm long gone for those days. My daughter's now uh, uh, driving. She just got her license a oh. couple weeks ago. So I, I do not. I don't miss those days. But I will tell you, changing a diaper far less stressful oh, than yeah. having to watch your daughter go out and, and drive by herself. Uh, at 17 years old. Okay? So my, yeah, I'm, I'm going to cherish all of those moments. She's actually starting to crawl now, so I'm having to awesome. keep her caged in in a little area. But now she's definitely a blessing. My uh, my family have been very supportive of my decision. I actually told him last night, just thank you for allowing me to make that decision and just being able to be supportive just because, like I said, my, my mom's a first grade teacher and she kind of harped on the, the education and getting the master's part. And I, like I, I told her, I said, I can go back and do that, but it's it's more it's more to it than 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 basketball and education right now. So I just feel like stepping away for the time being. I'm still going to be around it. I want to train kids um, in the area and just kind of give them hope to be able to to be in my shoes and being at the five eleven six foot mark that I am, not overly athletic and just being fundamentally sound, being around the game and just being able to have a dream and go chase that dream. And I, I want to be in all kids' corners because I want to see them live the college experience that I've lived. Well, listen, Patrick, we appreciate you coming on uh, and, and explaining kind of your decision. Uh, first person to opt in, uh, opt out of the college basketball season, but uh, stay safe, keep your family yes, safe and uh, have fun with your daughter. Yes, sir. Thank you. I really appreciate you guys. And last, last,